So now we're gonna connect this over here and this goes into there. We type in minus one and over here we put 0 0.05. Seemingly random number that I totally didn't spend 30 hours tweaking before I arrived at the right value. Yeah, well, turns out no one's actually watching that, or at least not in my channel. So I think, why even bother? Today, we're gonna do things differently. Also, while we're at it, the YouTube crystal ball tells me that almost none of you watching right now is subscribed. What? What the fuck? And, well, the best time to fix that was yesterday, but the second best time is right now. So get on it, because today we have something special. Something that I couldn't figure out quite right for a very long time. But now I finally got it, and I'm willing to share all my secrets with you. Now, a small disclaimer, for those of you who don't really want to bother with the tutorial or simply don't have time but still want the blend file, as always, it will be on my Gumroad, so feel free to check it out. So those of you who tried to do an anime style aura in Blender may know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that there is quite a few issues with auras in general in 3D. So to understand it, first we need to identify the problems that comes whenever you want to make 2D style aura in 3D. Because in 2D, it's fairly straightforward. You just take your cool character, you just draw around it and done. It is time consuming because you have to do it every single frame, but it's simple. The whole world has only two dimensions there, so it's hard to get it wrong. But in 3D, you have one additional dimension and no, that just God. screws everything up. So the trick is to simply ignore the third dimension altogether. After all, the render that comes out of Blender is two-dimensional anyway, right? Now, you may think, that guy just lost it. What am I supposed to now draw the aura every single frame? I still want it to work in 3D. I'm watching a Blender 3D tutorial. Fuck clickbait trash. And no, let me show you what I mean. So the setup, as you can see, is super simple. Literally, all you need is a plane and a camera and obviously your character or whatever mesh you want. And you just want to make sure that the plane has a constraint and is always looking at the camera and another constraint that makes it always follow the character in case of moving objects or animations, stuff like that. So the whole trick is, since you already have the plane following and facing the camera, just treat it as a blank layer on which the aura will be displayed. It's, it's literally that simple. What is not so simple, however, is how to draw a mask around the object and make sure that there is no clipping involved when the mesh is moving. So my mesh is this dude from Jojo that I got from Sketchfab because the original idea was to just make a Jojo style aura and I had no idea how versatile this thing is gonna turn out when I started. Oh, and before everyone will ask in the comments, where'd you get this cool animation? Do a tutorial, huh? I just got it from Mixamo for free, so go ahead and get your own if you want. So first of all, let's figure out the mask drawing. For that, we will use a geometry nodes ray casting, so make sure that you have dense enough geometry to work with. Basically, what we want to do is shoot up rays from every vertex on the plane in the normal direction and see all the vertices that hit the object. But before we can do that, as you can see, the plane is sitting right inside of our object, so we will need to set its position a bit backward so that there is no more clipping. But also not too much because, well, we still want to make sure that the plane is containing the whole character in the camera view. And additionally, we want to be able to access that info in the shader editor later, so we need to store the attribute as well. And because it's geometry nodes set up, we have to set up the material through nodes in order for it to work. Here is how the nodes look like so far. Um, nothing fancy really. And the shader is literally just the attribute factor, just so we can see what we're doing in real time. Now since I know for a fact that my audience, you guys, are among the smartest bunch in the Blender community, especially the one percenters, I'm sure you can spot a few things that have to be fixed with this setup. First of all, let's be honest, the mask is quite shit right now and we can't really do much with it in the shader editor either because the gradient is super harsh and it's so close to the object that it just looks like a bug, if anything. The solution to that, however, couldn't be any simpler. You just literally add a blur node and you're done. Secondly, if you tried to offset the plane further, that is when the whole let's just ignore the third dimension idea breaks and comes back to haunt you because 
as much as you would want to, there is no escape from a camera perspective. And no, even switching to orthographic camera does not fix the issue. But, and I will have to go full education mode for a minute, but at least you may learn something useful, so focus here. So now we are raycasting from the plane in a perpendicular direction, also known as normal direction, and if it hits the object, that vertex will light up as white. Very simple. And even if we move it backwards because of our constraints, the plane will always shoot up the rays in the same direction and light up the same vertices, as long as the camera stays in the same place. However, in the camera view, because of the perspective, the whole plane will simply shrink screen size-wise, and so will the mask the further you will move it backwards. So knowing that in 3D cameras are a single point in space, we can use that and cast rays not in the normal direction from the plane, which is facing the camera itself, but calculate the direction so that every ray from every vertex hits the camera instead. Here is how it looks like in the notes. It's very simple, you just take the camera position and you subtract the vertices position from it, and that will be your ray direction. Now, as a quality of life improvement, we can also add an offset to the mask, so that we control how far from the object the mask will extend without getting blurry, because blur, as awesome as it is, has its own limitations. So what we can do is, for the raycasting's sake, instead of our object, we use an inflated version of that object that we don't even need to see ourselves. We just offset all the vertices by some value in the normal direction and it's done. So the raycasting thinks that the object is bigger than it really is. And that is literally all the setup that you need in geometry nodes, and the rest of the aura is handled in the shader editor. I won't go into much detail here, because all it is is literally the channel classics. I am distorting the texture coordinates with some noise, then overlaying that noise on top of the mask using mix color node, and have two color ramps to control first the alpha mask, as well as the aura color. And all that is using the classic transparent emission mix shader setup, where the factor just controls what's visible and what's transparent. And for the one percenters that stay until the very end of the video... I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. You are the engine of the YouTube channel. You're my special friend. Also, let me know if this form of tutorial is more digestible or do you prefer the, you know, step-by-step hand-holding approach from my older videos. And I will see you, hopefully, in the live stream. Bye-bye.